Berlin ist ein High Energy Alpha Wein. Da lässt er nur noch den Zuhause dieser Konstitut sein. Also, wenn die Sieger, okay, die positive, kosten die Folge und so beziehen sie die vielleicht Gitter von Chemie in der Okay, and we know already that this theory has the Gaussian Alpha Wein effect. But now, the A is positive, the slope gets out positive here. But then it's one point the one loop coefficient takes over and develops an interesting fixed point for this beta function. Now let's have a look what this means for this theory. This theory would have two fixed points, a U B and a temporary fixed point. And so we can simply integrate the beta function and plot it. So we would have a beautiful ultraviolet finite trajectory running out of the U B fixed point, cropping over to the infrared, and then ending up in some infrared free theory. Okay. Now, of course, the role of the UV fix point now is had the one loop term not been able to compensate the tree level growth, the pattern would have continued to grow continuously. And that's what we in perturbation theory would say, also that the normal conclusion would then have been okay, this is not going to happen. Uh, this theory is not going to be predictive beyond some energy scale because our company is going to diverge. Okay, so the role really here of this term, or actually the fixed point, is to stop the growth of the coupling and to settle it on a fixed point. mechanism which is underneath each and every up and safe quantity theory. Okay. Now you might wonder, okay, how how can that be predicted? We know that up and safe free quantum field theory is not predicted, but now that we have such a fixed point, how is this going to be predicted? Two points. Firstly, it's not only that the translations are responsible to have cutting achieve the fixed point, so that at the fixed point the cutting remains finite rather than growing infinitely. So when at the fixed point the theory it is going to be characterized by both marginal and irrelevant direction in the same way as we know this from critical phenomena in condensed matter systems. As long as we only have a finite set of relevant operators in the UV, yes, we will have beautiful predictivity with the setup. Only if the theory develops infinitely many relevant operators, we will technically speaking lose predictivity. Okay. So from that point of view, you say predictivity you mean in a perturbative sense or no, just in just general. Say so I gave you the perturbative uh, uh, an example motivated theory, but this type of reasoning also applies non perturbatively Okay. So predictivity really means that, uh, so in a sense, for each relevant coupling, we have one free parameter, which then needs to be determined, say, by experiments. So if we have infinitely many, uh, it is not crystal clear whether this really is the predictive type or not, and most likely it isn't. Good. Now, when is this simple picture I just described reliable? Okay. So, or in other words, when can we trust perturbation theory for an ultraviolet fixed point. So what we really need is that the coupling A over B at the fixed point is arbitrarily small. Now, how can we achieve that? So we just came up with two main ideas. One goes back to Wilson. Let's use the epsilon expansion and let's imagine we live in a state time dimensionality which is actually on the way from an individual. Then we can use epsilon as a small control parameter. And then the fixed point will be of all epsilon. The other trick which people have invented is large in techniques. So imagine you have a quantum field theory with very many degrees of freedom. But then the one loop coefficient can become parametrically large of order n. So in the case where A is a field of order unity and B is of order n, you again can achieve a reliable ultraviolet fixed point in the perturbative domain. Now these are the two territories where half theory results are available. Now this is the complete list of quantum field theories where people have proved that this type of fixed point exists. So it actually goes back to a uh, first attempt of actually finding up in such a case of fixed quantum gravity. And these gentlemen, they arrive on a thing given by Gene Newton, multiplied by an appropriate power of your RG scale. But it also holds true for purely fermionic theories. And we know that about two dimensions as well, these theories take cosmogenic type models, are perturbatively not renormalizable in quantum field theory. Yet, we know that these theories develop an interest in ultraviolet fixed quantum gravity in the limits I just discussed. Now, the question I will be back in that also shows that if if we play that game with QCD and imagine that QCD would be living in four plus epsilon dimensions, then this theory will also be developed in interesting new fixed points. Finally, normally there are sigma models, okay, so scalar fifth theory, where uh, internal symmetry is really like non linearly. Here we know that about two dimensions these theories are technically non renormalizable, yet uh, some of these theories are, uh, actually develop nice, interesting new fixed points. Chief, now there's one odd thing on the stage, which is that we have examples 
to not in any dimension none of which is integral. And to give an example with an integer dimensionality where it's to be for free, where this dynamic proof has been made. But until very recently we had no working examples for a strictly four dimensional quantum field theory. And this is why I would like to show you now how the identical mechanism um, applies and is generating for us an interesting ultraviolet fixed point. now on to the equal for image. Okay? What, what I would like to start with is I would like to start with some SUNH theory for the running default function. So we already have seen the one root coefficient, which I call minus F to D. Now, because I'm going to prepare for a large end limit, which I'm going to take in a minute, I already have scaled a number of colors into my definition of the gauge coupling. Of course, uh, as long as we only have one term, there's no general proportional term because uh, the canonical mass dimension of the, uh, the, the strong coupling, or the SUN coupling, uh, vanishes. So in order to possibly see a fixed point with these, have to go to the two-loop order. Okay? Now the other thing we already can fix now is that since we know we have authentic freedom for positive speed, so if we know that an interesting new fixed point, we are essentially bound to take the negative. And let's look at the two coefficients. Some number of and alpha cubed. So what are the potential six points we can get? Well, as we said a minute ago, if the truly one, that six point we have is each and every time they measure. Fine. But that's the one truly one, which arises because two and one loop cancel out each other. So how are we going to make this a reliable analysis? Again, for the six points to be reliably in the service domain, we need V over C as small as we wish. And it is here where we apply uh, a trick developed by, an idea developed by Gabriel Levin and for some time back. So we imagine that we take many, very many, many uh, um, colors, so we send NC to infinity, but at the same time we send an X to infinity, the number of them in flavors, in such a way that the ratio of these two numbers is six. Now, if we do that, the ratio of these two numbers can be any real number we want it to be. So what we are going to use is we fix for an f over nc in such a way that an f over nc minus 11 over 2 is a small, an arbitrarily small number, as small as we want it to be. Of course, we are now with 11 over 2, you know, comes, where that which comes from, comes from the fact that the number b, the one loop coefficient, is proportional to its height. So in other words, what we are really doing here is we make one loop coefficient of the gauge beta function as small as we want it to be, and we are preparing to use that number as our objective control parameter to make an expansion. So, so that sets the stage for now. So let's see what is the first lesson we learn. There is no theory because the way we see the way we are away from four dimensions, absolutely. So then why we have to go at least to the second of one. Yes, yes, absolutely. So here comes the first device. The first device has been achieved by Coswell back in 74. But back then he noticed, if you play this game, no, there's no way for achieving an interesting ultraviolet fixed point. And the reason being that more than ever, this number C comes out positive. So, if as we said, minus B is also positive, then there is no way these two terms can ever cancel. Okay. So this is hard result, because this hard result tells us that there's no way of achieving an interesting ultraviolet fixed point, fixed point of HP with couple to terms only within the perturbation field. Is that we might have to take other degrees of freedom into consideration. 